So Crystal Palace are the new side. They did not get promoted. They lost in the playoff final. The job was available. I decided to take it. And my God, were they a financial basket case. When the interview popped up for Crystal Palace, I was very happy and very pleased that it was happening. But a message popped up that I haven't really seen during the interviews before. It was, can you... Are you okay managing a club that is in significant financial difficulties? So I thought, oh, of course I can. You know, you, you, you fix the finances through player sales. All that sort of stuff will be absolutely hunky-dory. I took over the club and uh, they were £150,000 over their £350,000 wage budget. So they were spending 500 k per week on wages. We had a £100,000 transfer budget. So it did take a lot of of player sales to fix it which we certainly have done as you can see we sold 62 million pounds worth of players and only spent 7 million quid in return so we have completely reshaped this squad got rid of the vast majority of the high earners some of which i wouldn't have minded of keeping in the championship they probably would have been fantastic players for us but it just wasn't on the cards financially before we quickly dive into the transfers and stuff, we'll look at the debts and loans. They have two pretty significant bank loans that we will be paying off every month. Thankfully, it's not a huge amount and they are very long terms, 2054 and 2056 respectively in terms of them getting paid off. Uh, our projection is to be at plus 14 million. That is basically all to do with our player sales. As you can see in terms of the current balance, we're on 42 million pounds. So we are expected to lose quite a significant chunk of that, like 27 million quid over the course of this season. But here, you've got to deal with what you've got to deal with. We've still got 6 million quid in the transfer budget with 40k per week remaining. The transfer window isn't actually over, but uh, I think our transfer business is pretty much done. So in terms of the outs, you won't recognise many of these faces, so we'll quickly jump through them. Francisco Concierge went to join Leeds for 11.75 million. An absolutely fantastic winger at 28 years old going to join a championship rival but again highest earner we needed to get the money in to reinvest in the squad in other areas kevin nugent's went and joined millsborough a good english striker for a fee that could potentially rise to 12.75 again high earner lewis chamberlain 10 and a half million decent little center half particularly with them being english high earner dean Mo uh, dean humphreys went to join standard for 8.75 million quid not the best striker i would say so getting 8.75 was a good bit of business there Nuno Batello, a decent centre half, went to join Spartak Moscow for eight point, uh, not centre half, central midfielder for eight point two five million. Again, another one who I wouldn't mind of uh, keeping, but it just wasn't on the cars. Thomas Ribeiro's went to join Frozenon for six and a half million pounds, a decent centre half, but thirty two years old had no future with us. Zach Falks went to join Livingston for four and a half million quid, a decent little winger, uh, English, not good enough. Four point two million for Ethan Vallette. Again, not good enough. And it continues like that. Edwin Valencia has left to join uh, Logan Tibor Moscow for 1.9. Jack Clark for 1.6. 220k for Andrew Sunday. And yeah, a lot, a lot of players left the club. And I'm really happy with the players we let go and the fees we, we were able to receive. And conversely, there's been a lot of ins. We needed to fill out our squad. We needed a lot of cheaper players. Players who were comp competent at the championship level. And... Uh, it's part of my long-term vision for Crystal Palace and our Premier League season if we are to be promoted this season. I need a lot. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> so Gilbert Leroux is one of our best signings, a loan signing from Olympic Leon, the only loan signing we made. He will be our starting player on that left-hand side. Wonder Kid, 15k per week, 4-star, 5-star. You can't ask for more than that. Now, a lot of these players who arrived on freeze are ahead of the youth development sign, so we've got to pass out the ones we did. PSV, Quinton Mongan is going to be a backup goalkeeper we signed on a free transfer. A decent little option. He's only on 5.5k per week. He's got a three-year deal. Uh, he might end up actually making it into the first team, where two goalkeepers in the squad are pretty similar in terms of their current ability, so he might end up making it. Mysel Longo we signed from Emberley on a free transfer with the vision of maybe loaning him out but it turns out he's probably going to be our backup striker. He is injured for five weeks. It was a seven week injury initially so he won't be available for the start of the season. A very average striker with good finishing. Jonathan Diguez was next from Castellon. A centre half, two and a half star current, three and a half star potential. He's going to be a backup in our squad. Scott Peacock, we signed that he might end up being our starting left-back for this season. He won't be available today as he is suspended. 
Uh, it's left back's definitely an area where we are weakest, but uh, a free transfer is worth three and a half million quid already. Uh, I'm happy with this one. Pasqualino Coninho, Co <laughs> Pasqualino Coninho joins us on a free transfer. Uh, three star current, four star potential joins us from Roma. Uh, a decent little centre back option. He's not actually going to be a starter, I don't think. Uh, but he is injured for today's game anyway, so you won't see him. But he's definitely a very, very worthy free transfer. And then that takes us on to the fee paying transfers. We only spent 1.9 million at most for a player. Ashley Brown came in first from Barry for 49.5 thousand pounds. A uh, bit of potential on this lad. He's went out and loaned to Forest Green for the rest of the season. Two and a half star, four and a half star. Um, and again, just another one for the future. Next up was David Fernandez, who we signed for 700 and 25k this lad will probably be our main and starting centre back he's on 20k per week which I was a little bit nervy on you know we need to keep our uh, wage budget in check but physically he's fantastic mentally he's good as well technicals as well lets him down particularly with that 11 heading but uh, three star current four star potential decent enough next up was Calvin Salkin who we signed from Leon for 725k an English central midfielder slash attacker midfielder uh, he will get himself plenty of game time as we are playing both of them positions. Two and a half star current, five star potential. He was transfer listed and English. It would just made all the sense in the world. Next up was Nismet Nikolic, who we signed from Batia for 750k. A very, very talented set half. 20 bravery just stood out to me straight away and I really, really like that. Uh, he's well-rounded physically. He's got decent mentals, decent technicals. And at 19 years old with potential to grow, he will be our other starting centre-back alongside Fernandez. Killian Adam, do you remember him? You shouldn't, because I never played him. 775k from Strasbourg, a good option across the attack at midfield positions. He would be playing back up to our lone player on that left-hand side from Leon, but he will find himself getting plenty of game time. We signed this lad for Huddersfield, two and a half million quid about six years ago, and uh, he hasn't really developed how you would imagine. He played a good number of games for Strasbourg in Ligue 1 last season, so he's got some good pedigree coming into the club and he'd be a good backup option at the very least next up was Nacho Gonzalez for 900k from Real Madrid a good defensive midfielder option who can play a wide midfield if we need him or centre back or central midfield so very very versatile sort of player he will be our starting defensive midfielder for this season and uh, happy to bring him in for such a cheap fee Oscar Remberg do you remember him he was at Leeds. I signed him from Leeds and we've signed him from Leeds again. £1.1 million. Right-sided player. Very, very talented championship player. When we signed him, he came in and did some decent little jobs for us and scored a couple of wonder goals, if I seem to remember, in the championship. He hasn't really blossomed since we left Leeds United. We did loan him out uh, to Minnesota in that first season where he didn't get the game time. And it hasn't really worked for him so far. So hopefully bringing him in, it was a compensation deal. So it was an approach. And uh, £1.1 million is a very, very good bargain for this kind of quality of player and uh, hoping to see really really impressive things from him this season and that takes us to our biggest fee Jacob Samuelson from Gothenburg for 1.9 million pound it was a signing I didn't want to make and can you remember the South African we were approaching in January last season with Nottingham Forest he actually got released but he decided to join somebody else so I went for our backup option Samuelson he looks fantastic he should be great in the championship but I have no doubt about it he's 13 finishing is a little bit poor but his physicals and uh, the other technical attributes should hopefully make up for that he's 10 passings a concern off the ball 12 yeah you know I don't think this boy will be making it in the Premier League but championship wise he should be more than good enough so of course this season we have two of our former clubs in the championship Leeds and Barnsley uh, let's see what the season preview says. So Barnsley are predicted to win the league. They have obviously some very good players from after being relegated from the Premier League. Leeds are predicted to come in second. They actually sold Cedric, that wonder kid D mid, to Chelsea for about 50 odd million. And we are predicted to finish in 11th. Yeah, so as you can see, they made a good couple of sales. Florentino for 15 million, one of our former uh, signings from Atletico Madrid. But there's the big one, Cedric, the best, one of the best defensive midfielders on the game. And somebody I wish we, on another save while we were continuing on, I wish I could have managed him for a lot longer than I did. Um, but yeah, he's developed absolutely wonderfully. So I'm not going to check Birmingham and Huddersfield's transfer history because by this point, a lot of it is irrelevant to what we already know. I will take a look at Nottingham Forest, see if they've made any major sales for any of our players. Ah, oh, they've sold Magyar. 
sold Magyar for £43.5 million to Manchester United. Poor, poor business. No names I recognise in terms of the incomings. Alan Velasco, poor signing at 29 years old. Why are you spending all this money? Lucas Nunes, 28 years old. Exactly the same sort of player. Baffling. But anyway, back to Crystal Palace. We have our first game today. It is against Everton in the Championship. They are still in the Championship. They've been stuck there for a good number of seasons now. They got relegated four years, uh, five years ago. In the past four seasons, they've been in and around the Championships with uh, the playoffs without ever getting promoted. And this will be the lineup for today's game. Let's have a look at some of the players you won't have seen yet. Baker will be our starting goalkeeper at least initially. English, 27 years old, was already at the club. Um, it looks a decent little option for the championship. Same with Luke Matheson. He looks like a really, really well-rounded right wing back. At 28 years old, he was potentially somebody on the chopping block with these 18 or 17k per week wages, but I decided against it and ended up keeping him. Fernandez and Nikolic are new signings. Saki Denley is our left back back up, and yeah, he's well rounded mentally and physically. Technically, he's terrible. Um, so, left back really is a major concern of ours. Nacho Gonzalez and Salkan, new signings starting in the midfield. Remberg and LaRue on the wings, both new signings. Rogers is uh, somebody who was already at the club, and he will be starting in the attack and midfield position. I'm actually not going to play him as a playmaker, I'm going to see how attack and midfielder goes for him. And then Jacob Samuelson up front. So this Crystal Palace squad has been cobbled together based on the finances available. And uh, hopefully we are able to at least compete to get into the playoffs. As you well know, every championship season, particularly when we've started in the summer and been able to implement our own transfer policy, uh, we have been able to get promoted automatically. So I'm hoping we can continue that run of form with Crystal Palace, but I'm not getting too ahead of myself. So in terms of lessons learned... From Nottingham Forest. One of the major issues with that Forest team was finances. We could not build up enough of a bank balance, particularly in the summer, to be able to make all the changes we wanted to make. And that is definitely going to inform my transfer activity and policy with Crystal Palace this season. And if we are to get promoted, so you will see a change, particularly in the January transfer window, of what I do and what I try to do uh, in terms of incoming players. We'll continue with this highlight though before we continue on. Nikolic, offside, so let's ignore that. Uh, all Pretty much every player you've just seen me sign will probably be up for sale in the summer. I am going to make wholesale changes. I'm going to raise as much funding as I can and that will inform my January transfer policy where I have all of my scouts scouting Europe because I can't scout South America or anything yet. The scouting range is too limited. Um, for players whose contract is expiring at the end of the season. And I will be looking to bring so many people in who, with the view of being able to sell them in the summer, it's going to be pretty unbelievable. So it's going to be a huge turnaround of players. I mean, it's sort of similar to what I do already, but it's going to be much more pronounced and much more um, widespread compared to our first 11 that we have done in previous seasons. So money is the aim of the game for Crystal Palace this season and myself. Transfers in and transfers out is going to be absolutely a huge part of this season and I want to build such a big war chest for our Premier League season at Palace that we can basically come, uh, create the starting 11 we want to rather than what uh, the limitations are on the squad. But anyway, that's enough about future plans. This game is going absolutely fantastically in terms of the match stats. We just have not been able to take our opportunities and the first half is coming to an end and we have ourselves another highlight 41 minutes in. Fernandez finds Matheson on the right-hand side down to Remberg. He's got the overlap from uh, Luke there. He whips it in. Samuelson's there and headed just over. Great first half in terms of performance. We just need that goal. Lewis with a free kick for Everton. He's played it short. And we're closing them down pretty well. Hopefully, we're not about to be FM'd here. Italiano bring it down this right-hand side. Johnson, back to Rodriguez. Can we nick this ball and spring on the counter-attack? I don't think it's going to happen. Italiano, oh, Italiano, Jacob Italiano. Italiano, that's his name. I've never heard that name before in my entire life. And Everton, completely undeservedly, take a 1-0 lead with only 25 minutes to go. I don't want to say this again. So with only 15 minutes to go, we are going to make some changes. Nacho Gonzalez can come off for Luis Lorenco, our backup defensive midfielder, who's technically brilliant in very specific areas. We'll bring on Steven Sessegnon at left back, and we'll bring on Killian Adam for LaRue on that left-hand side. 
Uh, ooh, I'm not liking this. 14 minutes to go. We need to get ourselves back into this game. We won three points from this. Um, I, pff, probably not going to happen at this point, but at least get a point, boys. Luke Matheson coming down the right-hand side. Plays it back to Lorenko. Come on, Lorenko. I've just brought you on. Matheson, don't shoot. I mean, shoot. Shoot all you like, Luke. Because you've got the shooting boots. Luke's first goal of the season. Our first goal of the season. And we level things up with 14 minutes to go against Everton. Lorenko involved in the player. Uh, obviously a substitute. Matheson doing pretty well with his finish there. Very surprising for a right back to be able to do that. Seven minutes to go. We have ourselves another highlight. Can we pinch this at the very end? Rogers to Matheson on the right hand side. Remberg. Goes all the way back to Lorenko. I thought he was going to try and turn his man and take a strike there. And it's back post. Killian Adam can't get it on target. Two minutes to go. Come on, lads. We would fully deserve the win. Wait until you say the match starts. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, but we have completely dominated this game. Adam to Lorenko. Matheson. Remberg. Oh, oh he's offside. <laughs> I was just about to start celebrating wildly. Never, never mind. We have a minute left on the clock. Is this an actual highlight? Or is it just the end of the game? We will soon find out. Steven Sassignon with a throw-in on the left-hand side. is whipped in. Oscar Remberg's there. And that was probably the final opportunity of this game. Killian Adam going down this left-hand side. He's done fantastically well. Tries to find Rodgers in the box. Come on. Come on, Matheson. You've done it once. Can you do it again? Not, not penalty rough. <laughs> Remberg to Matheson. Ah, oh, that's clear. There we have it then. Crystal Palace won. Everton won. A fantastic performance. A poor result. Um, it's good. It's good signs. Uh, obviously, if we'd drew that game, we played awfully. I would have felt a lot worse about it. So I think we'll be relatively content with that performance. There, Everton are always going to be a good side in this league, regardless. They've still got Moise Keane, who must be in his thirties at this point. Yeah, he's thirty-one. Still looks fantastic. So our squad is pretty much complete. I might see if I can sign a left back before the end of the transfer window. We do have the funds available. To be able to sign somebody competent. But um, I'm relatively happy with how the squad looks. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll judge that in the next 10 or 15 games or so. And we will return somewhere around here. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you there. But anyway boys if you have enjoyed today's video. Please consider leave a uh, like. And if you are enjoying my content. Get yourself subscribed. But until next time. Take it easy.